created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. and finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow, and to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon. The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field, binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? <clears throat> if we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, 
Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh, the dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben, Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> yeah. Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God, whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph, what has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, 
And part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a great vine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, What a strange dream. Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job. This man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work.
And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things, and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me. Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. Your spies! No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar, there are only 10 of you. One brother was killed and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No, he'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. Hey! 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 
Then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. Stop! Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup. What? what? No. Thief! For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Why? Why? No. What's he mean? Stand. Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No. No! Take me instead. No, me. Please, Great One. When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin. Joseph! It's true, I'm Joseph. Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know you're near Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs.
faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. What's that? A baby! Oh, this poor baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Who's there? God, the Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. 
go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, no sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well then, this God of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong God on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh. It's time for your bath, your royal highness. Uh... I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh. Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this. Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God. It is blood. Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You, again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here!
Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go. So the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again. So they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. It seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. Sandals in the sand Mighty Moses What an amazing sight 
And so, finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning. Then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> when the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws.
What is happening, Moses? What does God want? God is calling me. I am sure he has great plans for us. I must go ahead. And Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. I am ready for you. I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home.